So we I'd like to open the hearing on House Bill 154 and and invite the prime sponsor, Representative Birch. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Committee. My name is Paul Birch. I represent uh, Cheshire One, which is West Milan, uh, Walpole, Chesterfield, and Kingsdale, prime sponsor of this bill. I will attempt to be brief because I'm supposed to be in two places at once. <laughs> We're executing over at House Judiciary as we speak. Uh, I got involved in this issue uh, because I was reading, I can't remember whether it was in the Concord uh, Monitor or the Union Leader, but a reporter was trying to do a study of some issues uh, in a jail where, the, uh, uh, where there were some very large settlements. and. Uh, the claims apparently were about beating, improper medical care, sexual discrimination, and the like. And claims were in excess of a million dollars in a number of, number of cases. So the reporter went to talk to the people involved, and um, they went to talk to a Dolores Sanabria with a $215,000 settlement. And she said, I can't talk to you because I had to sign an agreement. Uh, saying I can't disparage you know, the other side in any way and I don't want to lose my settlement uh, by talking about it. He went and then talked to a Kevin McElroy. They tried it, he couldn't talk to Kevin McElroy because he died in jail. Uh, but they talked to his parents about wanted to talk to them about a $450,000 settlement uh, involving the death of this inmate. Uh, when asked by the press to describe what happened, the parents refused, saying they didn't want to lose the settlement uh, because uh, they had to sign an agreement. So I didn't think that was right on a number of levels. It, it's kind of a bit of a national issue as well as a, uh, it, it's a serious state issue. I just was looking at an article uh, in the Union Leader just a couple weeks ago titled, uh, Attorney General, Hillsborough County Attorney deal violated victims' bill of rights. And it was a side issue about whether a case had been closed without notifying the victim and without going through our, our victims' bill of rights. And that was the main purpose of the article. But uh, it noted that the, uh, the deal violated the agreement also prohibits the accuser from disclosing the terms of the agreement. We're now getting victims who are silenced by these, by these uh, practices. So, we have a statute already, but it's an ineffective statute. The statute we have, which is uh, RSA 50717, says that where a governmental unit has agreed to a settlement, the terms of the settlement and decree uh, are a matter of public record. But that terms of the settlement can be about six words. Um, uh, state pays Smith $400,000, Smith drops case, parties agree not to speak. It's terms of settlement. You won't find out anything more. Now maybe a suit was filed. You can find out from that. Maybe a suit wasn't filed. Maybe this was done before a suit was filed. And it, uh, the statute didn't work. So I tried having a uh, bill drafted up, which basically said, if you settle with a governmental unit, this is not a private party. It's not if, if uh, I get into an auto accident or I get in a fight with my neighbor and we agree to settle and we agree that nobody's going to talk about it. Not that at all. We're only talking about settlements here involving uh, governmental units. And this says that in such settlements with a governmental unit that settled, a uh, non-disparagement clause 
or any other language which prevents the parties from disclosing the facts of the underlying claim. Uh, we're speaking negatively about each other shall not be included in such an agreement. And there's a privacy thing for you know, minor children or other, other aspects of privacy, which are normal in, in 91A type matters. Uh, my drafting skills are not uh, particularly current, so the AG's office uh, over on the other side uh, came to me and said, uh, although we're on the side that gets sued, um, we represent those governmental units, uh, we think a bill like this is a really good idea, it represents best practices, and if you don't mind, we'll help put together better language. And I said, well, that's more than fine. So I want to give credit to uh, uh, Assistant Attorney General Edwards, who put together a team over at DOJ, came up with basically 99.9% .9 of the language in this bill is what the Attorney General's office said would be uh, uh, best practices. And mm -hmm. I kind of inhaled it here. Um, he, the one argument that I've heard against it is it may make it marginally diff diff more difficult to settle a case. And I think there's probably a little bit of truth in that. If you've got a room somewhere and you have two people and one of them has got you know, a bag of cash and the other one's got a problem, it's pretty easy to work out a solution. And at the end of it, the other person has the bag of cash and nobody knows what's going on there. That's fine if you look at that as two people or two parties, but it ignores the third chair, which is the public. It ignores, and yeah, it might be a little harder to settle a case when you say, well, the public has a certain amount of right to know what's going on with uh, public officials who have done wrong. There needs to be transparency and there needs to be accountability. There's a, a situation that's going on now because I was looking at the court case. Um, a guy was sued by the SEC. And, you know, in the normal course, you've got 27 counts of this bad deed, that bad deed alleged. And finally, he settled it. Uh, pled to one, paid a fine. Just, it got cheaper to, just to work that kind of deal out. But he decided to write a book and explain everything that went on. So he wrote a book, and the next thing he got was a letter from the lawyers from the SEC saying, sorry, buddy, uh, you signed a non-disparagement, non-disclosure agreement, and you can't, you can't tell about your side of what happened. That's in litigation right now, the Institute for Justice, um, which looks at these kind of things, brought a suit. What will happen with that, I don't know. But, as you can tell, there's a pretty strong First Amendment concern in addition to the normal concerns of transparency and accountability. You should be able to criticize the government. You shouldn't have as a cost of settling your case to have to agree uh, forfeit your right to criticize the government. A healthy debate about the performance of government agencies is a good thing. So is the discussion and light about how government money is spent, public money is spent. Um, so that's basically what this is, and uh, I want to run, but I can answer some quick questions too. In your French. Thanks for coming today. My initial concern was the difficulty it might create in coming to a settlement. And, and I, I'm not sure if it won't be larger than, than um, what you think. However, I also agree with the analogy of two people in a room, one with a bag of cash, 
and in a private matter, that bag of cash belongs to the other person. In this instance, the bag of cash belongs to the public, the taxpayers, and I can understand where they do have a right to know why that bag of cash was spent. And um, I'm not exactly sure. Are you, are you sure that this would not make it more difficult, I guess, to come to settlements with the state and municipalities? My experience, I, I think it, it will marginally make it a little more difficult when you have more sunlight. Sometimes it's, it's harder to settle things. On the other hand, having been involved in, in settling legal cases for 30, 35 years, if there's a reason to settle a case, it gets settled. If you've got really bad facts or bad law on your side, you're going to find a way to settle it. You know, the, the balancing of how it gets settled and who gets what and how much may change a bit. But sooner or later, you're bound by the facts and you're bound by the law. And uh, it's, cases will settle. It, it may take a little more to do it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing when you're talking about you know, public uh, employees, public money, and, and the like. Question, uh, Senator Bacon, and thank, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Birch, for your testimony. Um, regarding the uh, discussing the facts, how how do we prevent or how do we ensure that it's they are facts and not hyperbole? I'm not sure how much a difference it should really make if when we talk about, let's say, I'm sued by the SEC because I brought that up. I can I can write my book and say the facts are thus and so and my opinion is that the SEC is a bunch of scoundrels and they're not looking out for this and that. I think there's a place for members of the public to be able to say both things about uh, government officials. Thank you. Senator Carson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, Representative. Good morning um, to you. I, uh, I, I have a few questions, so I hope both you and the chair will indulge those questions. Um, I'm looking at the bill on uh, the second section, beginning on, um, uh, let's see, on line six and seven, where you're adding the language, um, or any former or current elected official, appointed official, officer, or employee. Um, you're changing that because before it was a governmental unit and now you're talking about individuals. So if you take that and you go down to the third section where you, you talk about speaking negatively about each other shall not be included in any settlement agreement uh, involving a governmental unit. So I just see this just being so messy because all you have to do is look at local politics and how sometimes people will disparage each other um, and unfortunately, sometimes it does end up going to court. And as an attorney, um, I found it interesting that you talked about people giving up your First Amendment right. But I think when you're going through a settlement process, you're giving up that right to speak about somebody else in return for something. That's the term of the settlement. And I just see this, okay, I think this person is a terrible person, and you can say all these horrible things about them. They sue you, you go through the court process, and it gets settled, and then it just starts all over again. I, I, I just don't see what this is actually doing. I think, in fact, this is probably making things a lot worse, because now you're speaking about people. And what do you do about somebody who was a a former uh, elected official who served and then passed away, and now people are going to start disparaging them. I mean, I just, I, I just don't understand what you're trying to accomplish here. I, I understand transparency and uh, being open and having these things available to the public, but we're talking about people here. We're talking about employees as well. 
Um, and, and I just see this just getting really messy and I just don't see what good that is. If, if you think that the state has done something wrong or your community as a governmental unit has done something wrong, fine. We, we have a process, you can sue somebody, uh, sue the town um, and have that available. But with this language about speaking negatively about each other shall not be included, I see that as, as real, very problematic. It's just going to keep a problem, keep going on and on and on and on. So that's my would you believe question. <laughs> If we, if we go back, you know, the, the language, by the way, is in an action against a governmental unit where the governmental unit has agreed to a settlement on behalf of itself or various individuals. So we're talking about an action against a governmental unit where the unit, in that settlement with the governmental unit, can't have a clause that says you can't disparage uh, any of the parties from talking about the facts of the claim or negatively about each other. Um, if we go back to the prison situation, if a, an employee of a prison brutalizes someone, and everybody can agree that that person did something wrong. And the family or the individual who's brutalized brings a suit or even says we're going to bring a suit, even preliminary, notifies the county and something is settled. Does that mean the public shall never ever know what happened? Because that's what's happening now. What's happening now is that all gets put under a desk pad and nobody knows what's happened because everybody is gagged from saying anything about what happened. That's, that's not hypothetical. That's what is going on right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, is there, no? Okay, oh, thank you. How will you get back and vote on your vote? Thank you, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you for your time. Uh, and the next person is, uh, I'm sorry to give you the first name, but Bloomquist. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I yield my opportunity. Appreciate it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, the next is Barrett Christina. And we're going to ask everybody now after the prime has spoken to try to keep it brief, preferably under three minutes. Certainly, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Barrett Christina, Executive Director of the New Hampshire School Board Association. Um, we are in opposition to House Bill 154. Um, some of the concerns that we have with um, this bill, first and foremost, it, it's interfering with what two parties want to do. If two parties think that reaching a settlement agreement with certain provisions and certain factors is in it. And it just be to see why the parties shouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, Senator French, to your question or your comment about a bag of money when you're in settlement negotiations, the reality is there are going to be two bags of money. There's going to be one designated for the plaintiff or the person making the accusations. There's going to be another one designated for the attorney that's representing the school district or the municipality. Um, so you know, we have what's often called the nuisance factor. We can pay $5,000 to get rid of this nuisance, or we can pay $40,000 in attorney's fees. Um, so if we're asking about you know, the public's interest in the money, um, you know, we think that oftentimes the nuisance factor plays into the consideration of the governmental entity. Um, is, um, is looking for when they're trying to, 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 to settle these suits and, and make the issue go away. Um, NHSBA's other concern, um, when we talk about the language of the bill, it says to discussing the facts of the underlying claim. Um, before you get to litigation, facts are often in dispute. So 
And if we're talking about settlements between a governmental entity and an individual raising certain claims, we're not going to know what those facts are. Those come out during litigation. And if you've ever read um, a court order or maybe something from the Public Employee Labor Relations Board, the court lays out what the facts of the matter are. Those are deemed to be true, if you will, by, by a court. Somebody who's listened to both sides. In a settlement, we're, no, we're never going to get to that stage. So language in the bill that talks about parties discussing the facts of the underlying claim, well, absent you know, somebody with any sort of judicial authority or oversight determining what the facts of the matter are, those facts are still going to be in dispute. And I think that's going to lead to further, I hate to say litigation, but um, disagreement among the parties as to what are facts and what are not facts. Uh, the other point that NHSBA would like to raise is that um, while um, the testimony earlier spoke to, um, you know, hiding what the government is doing or not letting, you know, violations that the government is engaged in come to light, the reality is some of these dis non disparagement clauses also protect the plaintiff or also protect the accused or the, the, the employee that's bringing, bringing the lawsuit. Um, you know, there may be reasons that the employer and the employee don't want to go to a, a public court because there may be unfortunate or unsavory things about the employee that while the merits of the case may be legitimate, there's gonna be some facts come out that are pretty ugly painting that plaintiff in a, in a disparaging light to borrow the language of the, of the bill. Um, and last, um, with respect to, to Representative Birch, he, he, he mentioned that SEC case a couple of times. And it, it, perhaps I misunderstood him, but I, I thought I heard him say that the SEC filed suit against an individual for alleged wrongdoing and alleged violations of, of the Security and Exchange Commission. As I read this bill, that would not come into play with that, that situation in which the government is taking action against somebody for a violation of law, would, a settlement agreement in that situation would not apply to this statute. As I'm reading um, page two, line six, in any action or claim against a governmental unit, in the situation or scenario that Representative Birch stated, that was the government initiating the suit. So it wasn't a suit against the government. It was a suit against an individual. So I'm not sure how much that would play into the language of, of, of this bill. A um, couple other points. There's already a provision in RSA 508 and a provision in the right to know law that states the settlement agreement is a public record. Um, so the, part, the, the public has a right to know what, what's in the settlement agreement, has to stay on file, that's already in law. So to some aspect, the, 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 the public's right to know um, is still going to be satisfied by, um, by disclosure of that agreement. So uh, there are a few other reasons, but um, in the interest of time, Madam Chair, um, NHSBA <coughs> opposes this bill, and we're happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you very much, Senator French. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there anything that you're aware of in our statutes today that require this non-disclosure language to be a part of uh, settlements? Sure. Um, in, in statute, not to my knowledge. Usually it's a matter that's handled between negotiations between the parties. So it could be negotiated at this point that that would not be part of the agreement. Correct. The parties have a right to negotiate a non-disparagement agreement in or out of any, any settlement agreement. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Further questions? Thank, Thank you, you very much for your testimony. Uh, and the final person that I have on this list is Audrey Friedman. Welcome. Uh, hi, my name is Aubrey Friedman. I speak in support of this bill uh, for change, something good. Um, the taxpayers, we pay the government officials. And if they do something wrong, we need to find out, and especially if we have to pay for a settlement. So I don't think um, th these things should be hidden from the public. And so by taking out that uh, disclosure, that non uh, disparaging thing, um, let the facts come up. And, you know, uh, that's transparency. It's a good thing. And if something, if especially government officials are doing something wrong, we need to know about it. Um, and also to perhaps 
fix that in the future. And if they know, if government officials know that uh, things are going to come out in the public, maybe they'll have better behavior in the, in the future and these things won't happen. So, um, and if they didn't do anything wrong, there's nothing to worry about. So I think it's, it's good that these things should come out um, and not be hidden from the taxpayers. And it has that uh, confidentiality thing, which is good. So overall, uh, I say it's a good bill. I'd like to see more stuff like this. Hold government officials accountable. No hiding things from the public. Thank you for your testimony. Are there questions? Seeing none, we appreciate you being here. Uh, and that will, is there anyone, who, oh, sorry, I don't see you on the list. Come on up. I'm, I'm on the other list. Oh, okay, the other, that the famous list. other list. The back list, sorry about that. Come on up. Uh, I arrived just a minute late, I think. Cordell Johnson representing the New Hampshire Municipal Association, and we also oppose the bill. Um, most of what uh, Barrett, Christina, and for that matter, Senator Carson said, um, it would uh, just agree with, with those comments. Uh, a couple other things that were uh, not mentioned, and it was discussion just now about getting the facts out, and as I think maybe Senator Levake said, sometimes it's not just the facts that come out, it's hyperbole that comes out. Um, and the idea of a non-disparagement clause is it puts an end to all, all that back and forth, the you know, constant, uh, never-ending battle uh, of words between the two sides. Uh, one thing I, I, don't know, I don't know that this has been mentioned is that a non-disparagement clause protects not only the employer, I'm thinking about this largely in the employment context, there, there would be other situations, but it, it protects not only the employer and the employee who is now left, but it also uh, protects um, co co-workers who, uh, the triple non-disparagement clause says, you cannot say negative things about any of your former co-workers who may have nothing to do with the underlying cause, uh, just the people who were there and the person has, has been terminated or is left under you know, very unpleasant circumstances might be lashing out at anyone, anyone who is there. Um, so I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, th there are depending on, on the circumstances, there are ways for serious facts to come out. If, if the event that gave rise to the settlement um, somehow results in other litigation, uh, and if a court orders uh, someone to testify, that ordinarily would supersede the non-disparagement clause. So, so the non-disparagement clause would not uh, would not always prevent all of the relevant facts from, from getting out. Um, I mean, there are legitimate, legitimate concerns that Representative Birch uh, expressed, but I just think that the inhibition on, uh, in in inhibiting effect that this would have on settlement agreements and the, the, the mess that would continue, as Senator Carson said, um, I think that outweighs the problem that, that he's trying to solve with it. Thank you very much. Questions? And, uh, thank you for being here. I'm sorry you. for being on the list. And is there anybody else who is on the other list? I'd like to close the hearing on House Bill 154. <coughs>